this is for, this is for. key. This is so vital to me because you are the second example I get from the well from Avalon from the British Isles um, about getting back to the roots and taking control of information and authority or false authority. The first one is really a, a funny story and I really want to share it with you because it just shows in a totally different way what it is I see you doing. Um, here in, in Denmark we had um, an exhibition of um, um, medieval weaponry, right? Um, and of course they had f uh, found some Stone Age uh, longbows and um, they had them on display and they were lying there with the with the curve and, and then they wanted to start a project where they were going to try and, um, and do experimental archaeology. So they wanted to remake these bows uh, from the finds, right, from the archaeological finds. So they built these bows and then they tested them. And what happened was that they had an effective pull of something like 20, 25 pounds, I think. No, kilos. That's 40 pounds, right? They were useless. They were totally useless. But they were useless because the archaeologists did not have any knowledge or experience with bows. They were trying... They didn't have the health of, they, they also wouldn't have had the same level of, of strength as well. Yeah, but the, the point comes now, right? When you find a bow and it lies there without the string, it's going to curve like this. But it curves counter to the way that you nook it. Got you, yeah, yeah. And the archaeologists didn't understand this. Incredible, isn't it? Yeah. So they had just created a totally useless bow, and then from live reenactment uh, people, mm -hmm. right? That's basically kind of like the role-playing crowd of uh, the grown-up version of role-playing uh, uh, people, right? Uh, there, there was uh, one of the um, uh, one of the British men-at-arms that had been doing a, a reenactment and, and recreation of weaponry and, and trying to rebuild uh, the traditional uh, weapons. Um, they found that when they then took that bow from the Stone Age find and they and they turned it the right side and and uh, and then tried shooting it it doubled in uh, in pull and that means that they could then test it and it would penetrate uh, a piece of uh, chain mail all the way through a whole pig and almost through the chain mail on the other side it was the technique, yeah. So it was just a technical thing. It was the understanding of um, the nature of making bows that they did not have at the archaeological department. And, and this is the same thing. You cannot sit there and, and write about psychopaths until you've experienced them. You can yep. maybe get someone that they caught, uh, which is a very special case, right? And you can sit there and you can start doing interviews and, and he will fill you up with a lot of bollocks right but you have to experience them in the wild you, you oh yeah you you can't yeah. say anything about uh, uh wolf behavior by watching your um discovery channel you you have to experience it yourself and and you can't um do analysis of a wolf or wolf behavior by using a domesticated dog that makes no sense Yes, and, and not only would, would a, an academic be dealing with the bullshit and the lies from the, the psychopath he's studying, but he'd also want to experience the chemical changes in his body, the, the changes in his physiology, his metabolism that's caused by being around these types. And that's what makes the experience completely different than anything else because it literally rewires you in so many different ways. And it's like... A, you know, how do you know when you've met a psychopath? <laughs> well, if you just fucking know, you know, you know, it's like that kind of thing. There's no, uh, there's no half measure there. Something different has happened here. You will this die. Is not, if, this is not the same 
this is not the human experience that I'm confronting this, right now. There's something more, it's and you know it. It's what's so important about the way that you coin the phrase uh, predator, that you call them a predator, because that's exactly what they are. Mm. Whether they kill you in the body or in the spirit, it doesn't really matter. What they do is they are predatory species. They, 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 they kill you in some way. And yeah. this is their, their goal. And, and you yeah. can't even say, well, why do they do it? Well, why, why do predators kill uh, animals? It's to feed. Hmm. And, and a psychopath must feed. And, and as you've explained, the, the, if you don't have the same empathic ability, then you need to act on it instead to get yeah. any, any form of emotional um, experience. 